go to the last uh, section. So, deep learning. The, today I'm not going to talk about deep learning or display nothing about deep learning, just give some example of how we use deep learning in, in the approaches we saw before or to, in the MIA. So, first of all, deep learning improves almost all tasks in NLP as in many other fields. Now we are seeing that deep learning now is really high and, and it's used everywhere and this is the typical draw of what happened with deep learning. If you are traditional machine learning and you have a lot of data, the, the performance is you, you get like kind of constant, but deep learning can really outperform machine learning if you have enough data. In NLP also, every single task that we supply at the beginning now there are deep learning approach to improve this task, but I'm not going to explain this, how to do NLP with deep learning. But the, the typical architectures that are used in NLP are LSTM and convolutional neural networks. And LSTM are used more in parsing, and recognition, sentiment analysis, and convolutional neural networks, classification, and sentiment analysis also. But well, this is not fixed. So this opens uh, uh, also, and deep learning has opened uh, another Thing that is the possibility to do end-to-end -end learning, so you can use directly the text without creating an embedding matrix like I did before, or you can also use character levels, so you can use the characters, not the words. Uh, you can use word embeddings, as we just later. <coughs> this is the idea. No? So first, let's talk a bit more about word to make. It's not exactly deep learning, but it's more like deep learning because you are doing an optimization and you are using soft marks, so, so it's very related to deep learning but without the need. So what are you doing in word to vec when you are learning the, the, the vectors? So there are two vectors, two embeddings, the word embedding and the context embedding. So and the idea is that this, the, the, the deep learning architecture for that, if you want, so we call that deep but it's not, so we have two embeddings and we compute the dot product of these two embeddings and apply a softmax function to that, and we have to maximize the probability. So, the, the, if, if this word, is, if we can predict this word from this context, the probability should be one of this dot product and a softmax. And if not, the probability should be zero. And so these are all training samples. We have the, the observed word and context as positive samples and negative <coughs> samples that are uh, randomly taken from the from the corpus. So we have positive samples, negative samples, and we train this until the embedding converge. And when they converge, we have the embedding for the words. So we, we minimize this objective function. So but there is also a word from Levi et al. that so okay in sense that in word word embeddings, word work, we have to we learn two matrix of embeddings, the matrix of words and the matrix of contexts. And typically, we use the matrix of words in, in NLP, but the matrix of concepts is not used. The of context is, is, is not used. No? But what are really these matrix? He, he said, what happens if you do the dot product of the matrix of context and the matrix of words? What is the matrix that you get? So here we saw a couple of things, right? So this matrix is like the point-wise mutant information matrix of world and context. So well, the, there are some papers based on that that also use the context, not only the world embedding. So here, well, you have more links to, to, to go deep into word to work if you want. So the idea here is that, okay, we can see that words and context, we can think about, we can use the same methodology, but use other things. For example, words can be songs and context can be plays. So we can try to find the embeddings of songs or the embedding of artists using the word to make. Uh, or we can think that tags and items, tags and words, and context are items, and we can also learn the embeddings of tags in a tagging system, or we can do different things. So we did an experiment with a data set of plays for the tutorial, we did that. <coughs> so, using the, a data set of playlists very old, from La Rosa, we get it, and we have the artists, so there are playlists of songs, and we get the artists of this playlist. So, 
every context is a is we, we, we set up a context in, in, in the playlist and learn vector representation embeddings for the artists. So we have put a, a, a Python node on the tutorial website with this. I will show you. I hope this is not crash because it's not using internet. So the idea here is pretty simple and fast. We use Jensen, that is the library that we set that is very good for for embeddings in Python. We get the like the playlist files and process them a bit to have a list. So at the end we train the word to bed here. We pass the all the sentences. A sentence for us is a playlist and the words are the artist. So a sentence is a a, sus, a, a, a various artists one a list of artists. So we, we define the number of dimensions we want for the embeddings, the size of the window, so what is the context? The context is 10 songs after and, and 10 songs before. The, and these parameters and we train the model. It's super fast. It should be okay. So and then we have the model trained. And we can now Okay, so look for more similar to Miles Davis. Miles Davis is a word in our word embedding uh, space that we have learned from the playlist. And we get, for example, in a simon, you have trains. What is the most similar to Marilyn Manson? White zombie, Metallica, or most similar to Nirvana? There are things has sense, no? It, it was like that. We can see also look for what is the odd, like here, Marilyn Manson, Metallica, Tony mm -hmm. Ricky Martin. So Ricky Martin. <laughs> and this this is the vector. No, this is a the vector embedding of Nirvana, no? a lot of numbers. So we have 100 dimensions and this artist is represented in this space of 100 dimensions. Okay, now deep learning for music recommendation. So this is the last thing I was working in. I, I, I was in, in Pandora with an interest doing deep learning for music recommendation. And um, well the idea the there is a the state of the art in recommendation is use matrix factorization. So you have the user item matrix and you do factorization and you get two matrices, one of item factors and the other of user factors. If you multiply these two matrix, you reconstruct the, the original matrix and you also fill the missing cells. So the, there is a problem of optimization to learn these two matrices from this matrix so this is, and once you have this, you can multiply them and, and predict the recommendation. This is the state of the art. So the problem here is what happens if you have a new item in your system? You don't have any collaborative information. It's empty, the, the, the matrix of user items for this new item. You don't have nothing. So this is a call start problem. You know? So the thing here is, OK, if you don't have user information, you have to do a content-based approach. You have to use the features of the item. Or you have to do a hybrid approach. You have to combine the collaborative information with the with the features of the item. So you, these two hybrid approaches, for example, one is the aggregation of feature vectors, that is what I explained before in the recommendation. Or we can also learn the item factors from content features. There was a paper from Sander Tillman and Aaron Van der Lord that is very good that they what they do is to learn the item factors from the audio content directly using deep learning. So what we are working now, it's not part already, is to learn the item features from the artist biography. So we have a biography of the artist and we have a, a, a factor of the artist that was uh, obtained by factorizing the user item matrix. So we train a deep network able to learn. So once we have a new artist, we have a new biography of this artist, we can learn this factor. And once we have this new factor, we can combine with the user factors and predict the recommendation for the user for this new item. So this is the idea. 
and we are working with the NEOSO data set, the DISA data set we have and that has a lot of information music. We have the biographies of all the artists um, processing that. So we have some preliminary results on that. So this is in a precision file. So this is the uh, 500, like the upper bound. So if we have the matrix field, we, we, we have the information from this item. What is the, the recommendation accuracy we get, like this minimal precision? Well, 0.5. Okay, this is the upper bound we can get if we have with this method. <coughs> if we do random, so if we create the factors random without factorization, what we can get? 0 0.001. And if we use the tags of the of the artist to learn the factors, we get 0 0.57. Okay. So the idea is okay. The tags are a socially created uh, information that you don't have that always. You, you may have that in a data set if you have, but if you have a very new artist, perhaps you don't have tags. You just have the library. So what we want to do is to really Try to explore the information in the text of the biography to be able to learn as much as the tags are able to read. So we try to do a vector space model, for example, this typical approach of text space, and, and input that in a feedforward network. Um, we, we also compare that with use, not using deep learning. So yeah, just using deep learning instead of a classifier like random forest, you improve and using the typical text-based approach for embedding. <coughs> then if we add semantic information, like we did in the other approaches, doing FT linking to the biographies, and adding this information to the words, we, we improve it also. We also try <coughs> to use uh, word embeddings um, and also recurrent neural networks like that with like LSTM, but they are not working that way. Because perhaps this Classification problem, because this is really a classification problem, we have a, a long test, a very big test, text, and um, recurrent neural networks doesn't work that well with long text, texts. Um, well, we are um, word embeddings approaches, mm, well, we are working with that, so it's just an illustration this of no. What can be done? So everything can be redesigned and using deep learning instead of using classification as I was using before on traditional machine learning. So another thing interesting of deep learning is that we can combine text and audio. We can combine images and, and, and audio. Images, text, and audio. So we can do multimodality. And there is the same approach almost for every one of these domains. So now, there is really a cross-domain transfer of knowledge here because the, this is end-to-end -end learning. You don't have to learn about learning features. You just have to learn how to build uh, the architecture of the network. So if you know how to build an architecture of the network with audio, you can do that with text. If you know how to do that with text, you can do that with images. And you can connect everything in the network and you can do multiple approaches. So that's another thing. 